fine, fine. So gonna see. Okay. Well, space is getting that. Move, I'm curious what your thoughts are on Anko as a character within the Naruto series. Do you think she's narratively written well? Is there more you would have done with her out of curiosity? Yeah, I would say she's just another like um character who who got who was from part one who got wasted in like part two. Like you know, tuning exam, she was a big role with her interactions with Orochimaru. And like just like many characters in the tuning exams, like Nanji Rock Lee, they got sidelines in part two and didn't do much. So, you know, could, could definitely bring her in part two to like give back Sasuke's curse mark and make him relevant. Orochimaru. And if that's the case, then him losing Orochimaru is the biggest nerf ever. So it makes perfect sense. Okay, I found it. All right, perfect. Take it away, Space, uh, whenever you're okay, ready. So the die I... okay, so the die idea is female players onto from Team Minto A group who are in love with Obito under influence of Rumor Tudmart blame Wayne for Obito being better alive and Todd and Wayne dead. Then, when Toby mad Tom off, and he said to Kakashi, you let Wayne die, the female tail alive, saying she till Wayne, then Obito and those who were in love with him both die from twin, from t twin snake mutual dead. Where, I don't know. I don't know, you can, you can read it. Okay, okay, sure. Um, can, did you compile it into one place? Here, I guess this works, um, since you found it. No. Okay, that's okay. You can read it. I'll I, scroll I read up. It. Right, so this was an Onko rewrite that Space found that I wanted to bring up because I thought it was really interesting at one part. Before we get to that one part, I have to bring up the context of some of the other parts, of course. And so... The first thing I want to present is oh, the God. fact that in this rewrite, Anko is going to be more relevant to the Obito story. So this is with the intended purpose of having... In fact, I'll go with this just for the time being. The reason that we're doing this Anko rewrite is for the intended purpose of drawing some more connections, or at least one more, between Naruto and Obito. So obviously we know that Obito has a lot of similarities to Naruto. There's also a couple differences, but a lot of the similarities fall within the Team 7 dynamic between Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, and then you have Obito, Kakashi, and Rin. One aspect that they failed to bring up within the original series, especially with the love triangle aspect of this, is the Hinata of the group. So in this rewrite, Anko from Kakashi's generation is going to be the one who is secretly in love with Obito the entire time. This is really interesting when we get into it. So the part that I think is most interesting is we're going to basically include basically another mini arc if at most, if not just like a couple episodes, just a couple little extra spices here and there. Maybe like whenever before Obito invades the village, with the nine tails. So maybe like when he's going to visit Rin's grave. Around that time period, Anko is gonna find Obito and recognize him. That's gonna be interesting. Then Anko, regardless of what you think she's gonna do, I think that's just an interesting dynamic, first and foremost. What I think would be most interesting. Would she recognize it with the mask on. With the mask on. Mask yes. On. Unlike Minato. In fact, this plays into when Minato doesn't recognize him later on. His reaction to that is so visceral and real and guttural. You can feel it in the pit of your gut. Because Minato's not recognizing him, despite the mask. Whereas someone like Anko, who always loved him, did recognize him. In this case, Anko's reaction is either going to be to try and save Obito. Maybe she does that at first, then maybe she tries to run away la later on when she realizes she can't. Either way... I like the idea that she's trying desperately to get back to the village to relay this information that they're not going to have for another 20 years if she doesn't succeed here. She's trying to relay this information that the masked man is Obito. And of course, like, that doesn't necessarily mean anything at this point in the timeline. But you get the idea that she's going to relay the fact that Obito's alive, he's wearing a mask, he's planning on invading the village if he finds out that. Um, and then the way that this is going to happen is that obviously Obito's going to use the Mangekyo Sharingan to make her forget her memories. This, to me, feels very similar to the Attack on Titan scene. Spoilers, by the way. Spoilers for Attack on Titan. The scene where 
Marco overhears Reiner and Bertolt talking, and then they have to dispose of Marco. It feels similar to that to me. What do you guys think about that as a concept before we go any further? I mean, it could definitely work. Um, one thing I would do, though, is have a little bit of an address for why Obito is not going to just kill her. And there's a lot of ways you can do that by either pinpointing a little bit more specifically why he's going to try to kill Minato or what Onko means to Obito to give him a reason not to kill. Now, obviously, you could just use very subtle implications like Obito didn't kill Kakashi, for example, when Rin died. But we can we already know the bond between Obito and Kakashi there. So I would just make sure the audience would either directly know or indirectly know why he chose to just wipe her memories instead of killing Ongo. As long as you know that, then yeah, why not? Yeah. I do have an idea. Take it away, Space. So on okay. on to what it over to sudden foot sudden flan beside winged. Like exactly. Wayne would over to first friend, onto mm -hmm. onto is it over to sudden friend. I How definitely, I like the idea in this rewrite that it's not just she's being the creepy Hinata stalker who Obito never realizes. I like the aspect of Obito. She Obito might not know. Obito can be dense. That's fine. Maybe he finds out later on. Maybe he does find out. It d doesn't matter. Either way, his heart's to Rin, so he's going to turn down Anko either way. Doesn't necessarily matter. But I like, 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 I like the idea of Anko being more prevalent in this story, not only for the characters, but for the audience as well, which I think would, in a way, fix what Kamui's mentioning. I also like the idea of something that I already mentioned. The reason Obito doesn't kill her and chooses Ops to erase her memory is because she recognized him. Hypothetically, if she didn't recognize him, maybe Obito would have had the conviction to kill her. But because that's like a, a tie to the past, as well as a connection of love that Obito has, he can't kill the humanity in his heart. And so he can only go about it by erasing her memory. In fact, narratively, Anko would earn her living, in this case, as opposed to dying, she earns just having her memory erased by recognizing Obito, staying true to her love even after the boulder had already fallen on him. Would I explain... think... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Space. Would would all explain why Obito hate that Minato doesn't doesn't realize that it is him? Well, it would explain why Obito hate that so much. Exactly. Yeah. That goes into why he's willing what to kill they... Minato, who didn't recognize him, unlike Anko. Go ahead, Conley. One thing I would do to be careful, though, with this case is you can't have Obito and Anko be too close. Yeah. So in this case, Anko recognizing Obito would almost be like an eye-opener, something that would shock Obito, because Rin is supposed to be Obito's sole light and hope in the world. Mm -hmm. He cannot think of Anko anywhere near that, or yeah. else it doesn't work with his downfall. So what we'd have to have is he can know Anko, maybe even know that Anko likes him, or at least consider her a medium friend. Maybe not as close as Kakashi or Rin became, or even Minato, but like he knows of her. But when Anko recognizes him, that's almost like a step back where it's kind of like when Naruto pushes against Obito's path. It's kind of a similar thing to where it's going to make him doubt it for a moment. He's going to be like, she recognizes me. It's almost going to be like a glimmer of hope in the world again, to some extent. And then fighting Minato is almost going to be like his way of trying to prove his path. Minato is not going to recognize him, so he's looking for that validation. So I think this could work as a concept, for sure. I completely agree. I definitely think that Obito cannot have any... If he does, then it can't really be to any extent at all. Any romantic or sexual attraction towards Anko, obviously. He can have maybe a small amount of emotional attachment, but he's going to have more of an emotional attachment to Kakashi anyways. So it would just yeah. be like the same attachment that he would have to someone like Asuma or Kurenai or Guy or anyone else from that generation. It was just yeah. a connection from the past a, that he severed. A bygone from the past that he's already discarded. 
something that's from a but the fact fake that reality. Elko recognizes them. It's almost like he the the bond the tie isn't severed because Elko recognizes them, which is proof that the bond is still there to some extent. And yeah. in this case, you know, Obito struggling with casting off that bond. It's almost like it, it would be very interesting to we'd have to change the work stuff, uh, work stuff, but having Naruto actually point that out could even work in their whole talk no jutsu ninshu conversation. If Naruto says something like, you know, you were never able to cast aside your bond with Onko, <laughs> in addition to <laughs> Kakashi and stuff, like, it was kind of goofy, but, like, you could implement something like that going with this rewrite. Exactly. Hey, we Before we go... Oh, I we oh, go yeah. yeah. I did realize something you could do. Now, you two had Onto win Dane her medley bat, and she told Kakashi about it, and and Kakashi and Obito, Kakashi bring that up, and with his talk with Obito. Okay. Um. Yeah, but... Yeah. Before we go any further with this idea, I wanted to move if we could get some of your thoughts on this rewrite in general. Do you like it? Dislike it? Anything you want to add or change? Maybe even take away? You'll probably hate it. <laughs> yeah, that that would be a good rewrite. And um, yeah, with Inko, you know, another uh, one you could add is, you know, Conan and Obito. Like that could be like instead of Rin and Obito, that one would be the instead like they both defect from the Koski and then like Obito gets the Rinnegan from Conan to use against Madara and that would be like one of the like Opto's like just working for the Kosuke to really work for the Leaf this whole time and that would be an interesting plot twist it definitely would be a plot twist yeah and interesting mm. it's almost like it's discussion. almost like first it's the Obito reveal followed by the Itachi plot twist so you get two plot twists in one <laughs> It's weird. My camera's not working on stream, but it's okay. There we go. Okay. Um, so before we going any further, I do want to present a couple of things. The first thing is that I love the idea of this scene, this scene of Anko recognizing Obito right before he invades the village. And because of that, Obito erases her memory, leading to the same events that we have now. They were so close to discovering this 20 years ago. But because that didn't happen, Obito didn't allow it to happen, it still leads to these same events that we have now, which makes it feel all the more tragic because it could have been preventable, both from the Hidden Leaf's perspective if they found out that information, and also from Obito's perspective for this to have happened in the first place. And it makes him more resolute going into it as well, especially because of the fact that Minato didn't recognize him. Now that we know it's possible for loved ones to recognize Obito despite the mask, it makes it all the more tragic, especially with Minato feeling despair over not recognizing Obito in the war arc. I also like the idea of, you get this in some of the flashbacks notes, some of this might be anime-only editions, but in some of the later flashbacks where Obito's, you get like Obito's internal thought process during when he's talking to Nagato, when he invades the village and fights Minato and so on. You don't get that during the Kushina flashback, but a later flashback. I like the idea of getting Obito's thought process while, you know, maybe we just hypothetically... Uncle just says like obito is is that you or mm. something and then like you just get that look of shock obviously the mask covers it but like do you get like one of those um anime effects to where there's the mask and then to like the left there's a faded shadow of obito's actual face you know what i'm talking about where he just looks shocked and then he doesn't he freezes he doesn't know what to do for like several seconds before he decides to get jutsu or maybe he even contemplates what do i do do i kill her do i leave it and then he decides to get jutsu There's a lot of things you can play with but i like the idea of obito's thought process in fact i like that idea moment. that because obito's not prepared in fact we see this within the itachi novel when kakashi as an ombu is about to show up to save itachi from obito the masked man after obito killed his teammates Obito flees because he doesn't know what to do. He's not prepared to face Kakashi like this for the first time since these events have happened. So I definitely like that aspect for Obito's character. In fact, 
Maybe it isn't Obito that makes the decision. Maybe Obito reacts based on Anko being the one to start running away. Perhaps if Anko stayed and Anko's doing this out of panic, she doesn't know what she's doing either. It's not even that she's making a choice. It's more like her body's moving on its own. Going back to that idea. Um, I like the idea that Obito is also moving on its own in reaction to that. Perhaps, maybe, if Anko had stayed, and they can both be thinking this, maybe she could have convinced Obito to stop before it's too late and to come back to the village. Another yeah, element of because tragedy. Because in this case, Anko won't try to talk to him. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of like, like Minato, to where uh, it's going to be a different reaction. Minato is just like, it doesn't matter who you are, I have to stop you. In this case, Anko will know who it is, but if, rather than trying to talk to him, she's just going to try to inform everyone, which is going to be different right. from like Kakashi and Naruto in the war who try to talk to him. Exactly. Yeah. And once again, it's going to be easier for Obito to discard his past in this way, because basically the fact that he knows that Anko loves him and Anko recognizes him, this means that because no one else recognized him, even Minato, they must not have loved him as much which basically validates his path the reason he's doing this in the first place they're almost like imposters illusion why care for them if they don't even care for me enough to recognize me unlike someone like anko who we could even say anko loved obito but not to the extent that obito loved rin it was just like a normal crush even yeah and what yeah why not turn subtle exactly 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 going back to that idea so it's just easier for Obito to disconnect from the connections that he's had from his previous life within reality, disconnecting from reality itself, which allows him, perhaps even, the conviction to have killed Minato in the first place. Perhaps here, in this rewrite, he can think that if he had never gained this conviction through Anko, then he never would have had the conviction to have killed Minato going forwards in the first place. This could be what solidifies mm. it for Obito to attack the village as well. I had an idea. I had an idea. Yeah. Okay. It, you two, you two, is, you two have it to explain why Obito might hate someone like Mahut. Yeah. Yeah, like that. What I mean, like, because because he know like because he find out like what. What Uma did to Anto and a lot of other people. So you don't have that. Yeah. If you want to. Move, I'm yeah. curious if you have anything new to say on this Anko rewrite before moving on to more Anko rewrite stuff. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really good rewrite and involves Anko more in the story because, you know, he's definitely um, was like um, in the same group with like Takashi and my guy and stuff. And you know, would really save her character. I agree. And I'll also say real quick that I think there aren't too many interactions with Kakashi and Anko in Naruto anyway, but this could just add more depth to any interactions they do have. Plus, we could add some more Anko Kakashi interactions. Um, do you, hell, you can make another love triangle with Anko Kakashi and Obito if you really want. Oh, that's that but... a little fall. That's a little fall. <laughs> This but could like, be especially. Is, you yeah. could do more with Anko and Kakashi's relationship to some capacity, mm -hmm. especially given the context of the rest of this rewrite idea. Yeah, there is definitely a lot more with this. I'll say as well, given this idea, like Kamui was saying, especially you can have, and like in a not weird way, you can have Anko looking at Naruto, like in the Forest of Death tuning exams, and you're like he reminds me a lot of Obito. You know, just scenes like that, that just really add something there as well. There's a lot more. Yeah, it's kind of like Tsunade with Naruto and Nawaki and Naruto and Don. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think that works. Before going further with more ideas of this rewrite, I do want to say something that I like about this rewrite and something I don't like about this rewrite as much to where maybe I do it, maybe I wouldn't. But we'll get into it more and we'll give our final thoughts after that. So right now, I do want to specify that for this rewrite... I love the idea of this scene of, you know, Anko and Obito meeting for this reason, and then Anko discovering who Obito is, his secret identity. I don't necessarily like the context as much. Kamui, you're going to disagree with me. 
I already know this. This is fine. Personally, I mm-hmm. think there's enough connections between Naruto and Obito. Enough similarities that you don't need to make them exactly alike. I know that Naruto has a line of saying, you're so much like me that it hurts or whatever. It, it, he He's annoyed by the fact that they're so exactly alike. But there are clear differences between Obito and Naruto as well. There's enough similarities there to where I don't think you need to go this extra push. In fact, you could argue there's already too ma- too many similarities as well. You could take some away. You don't need Naruto at the beginning of the story to be wearing goggles. There's no function or purpose for it in the story. It was just a design choice that Kishimoto scrapped anyways because it was too hard to do. Never should have been there in the first place. For Obito, it makes sense for him to have goggles because the whole crying eye thing for Naruto, there was no reason for it to be there, and it was really just for the connection to Naruto that he added it in in the first place, and then for the I think he just added in because he has the goggles now. But for Naruto, he never had that. He mm. cried during childhood, but that was never a thing that he was doing. So I feel like you take away the goggles at the very least. But I, I don't think you need. I don't know why this you said I would thing. disagree with that. Like, because just real yeah. quick. It, I, I think there are. I don't think you need this extra similarity because Obi, like you said, Obito and Naruto are plenty similar. Mm-hmm. And like you just said, you could even argue they're almost too similar. So you definitely don't need to yeah. add any. I, I'm not going to say that they are too similar. I, I don't think it's a problem That's how fine, similar yeah. they are, but you definitely don't need more. The goggles one is funny, and I completely agree. I think the only thing, and this is complete headcanon. The only thing you can really say, in fact, I think Aruka might have even made a comment on this. That might be why I'm saying this, but the only real reason you could say that Naruto might have been wearing those goggles in universe is to put something where his eventual headband would go. Because it yeah. almost felt like he was wearing a headband by wearing those. Because it's not like he's wearing them over his eyes. He's putting them on his forehead where the headband goes. Yeah, so you exactly. could argue that's that's the real reason why he's wearing them to begin with. I don't think it's directly said in the series, but I mean, I think it makes sense. But it's implied. But yes, the the real reason is design choice that was scrapped. <laughs> yeah, because even yeah, in the I understand. I... even in the story, uh, when a Ar- when they're like e- when Aruka and Naruto are eating ramen together, Naruto's looking at the headband like, "Oh my gosh, I want to try that on, Aruka. Please let me try that on." And Aruka obviously doesn't let him because he's, he hasn't earned it yet. He has to earn it, which by the end of the first episode, maybe first chapter i'm not sure if that's how it ends he earns it he does get the headband by passing graduation by doing the the shadow clone jutsu but that's absolutely the reason that's because he wants to take his goggles off to put his headband there that's at least definitely implied even within the story itself so more things on this i think that is the reason there yeah more things it's a different reason it's not for exactly it's the dust in the eyes exactly so again a similarity but different in that way you could argue it's also narratively genius because it's both the similarity and the difference with the goggles but again the goggles might just be too much as it is but either way that that's not as important more things with this in my personal opinion i think it's just equal but different if you didn't have the goggles i don't think anyone's gonna say oh wow Oh, should I have the goggles? And if he has the goggles, <laughs> nobody's like, "Oh my god, worst thing ever." It's, yeah. it's equal either way. It's not the point. Um, the point is really their personality and goal. Yeah, that's real. Even the love triangle isn't actually necessary or really the point. The point is just they both want to be Hokage. They were both these bright, bubbly, happy-go-lucky personalities. They were orphans, you know outcast it's stuff like that that was the point yeah yeah two more things with the anko rewrite and then we'll get into how it affects the war arc but the two more things with the anko rewrite that i wanted to add in for like part one or early shippuden is definitely the reason she's at the grave site to meet obito when he's at rin's grave in the first place it's a small rewrite but in this case you're just having obito's fake grave be next to Rin's grave and Anko was there to visit Obito's grave which is really interesting that's the first thing and that again gives the reason because she's validated because she's there because she still loves Obito she hasn't given up on him even though he's dead which is the reason she recognized him in the first place this also ties into in this place replace Kuranai with Anko Right when Hiruzen's funeral is happening, and Kakashi has been there since early dawn. In this case, Kuranai's 
just randomly going there, maybe for Kakashi, maybe just randomly to visit Obito, I guess. In this case, you're putting Anko in that position because she still loves Obito, even, what, 30, 20 years later. Definitely 100% agree with the second part. In this case, Jeff yeah, swap Anko and Karanai. I will say with the first part, though, Kakashi in that scene was at Obito's grave, puts the flowers on it, and Obito takes them away. So you have that to. That was Rin's grave. That was an Obito's tiny. grave. Yeah, that was Rin. Are you sure? I thought it was Obito's grave. Yeah. Either way. R either so way, Obito's grave. To, are we going to have Kakashi and Obito both there? Or is Kakashi going to leave? Then Anko shows up. Like, Kakashi leaves. Kakashi definitely up? leaves. I don't want to get rid of Kakashi at the grave. No, no, that stays. So this is Rin's grave. So you know this because Rin's grave is buried within like the Will of Fire monument. Whereas Obito's grave is the Will of Fire monument at the the place where they were doing the bell test on the training ground. Which training ground is yeah. it? You know the number? Training ground three, training ground four. Three, I believe. Three, yeah. That's. I don't know why they buried Obito there. I mean, he's the black sheep of the Uchiha clan. He's the outcast of the village of the Uchiha. Maybe that's... I mean, I think it's because he's the hero of the village, quote-unquote, from Kakashi's perspective. Maybe Kakashi buried him there or built that some... I, they never explain how or why. That just is the case randomly. Maybe they're, like, right next to each other with a couple trees in between. I don't know, but that just is the case for some reason, apparently. Actually, now they say that, I, I, I don't know if this is filler. I remember there is a moment right after Rin's death where the Uchiha are scheming to maybe kidnap Kakashi to take back Obito Sharingan. I think that was filler. Was it that? Might be filler, but I know what you're you talking about. You two made a tannin. Okay, okay, that that wasn't Rin's. Kakashi was at right? Rin's grave, and he said, "I ought to tell Obito too," implying he was just gonna go right over to Obito's grave. Okay. Okay. But because so, they're apparently in different Kakashi? areas, that would explain why. So he's yeah. he's going to a completely different field. Mm -hmm. But oh, okay. But. It, in this case, Anko should be at Obito's grave, which is in a different area. So it, exactly, that's going, why. Is the order going to be? No, that's why I'm putting so them the next to each other. Obito in this goes case. to Obito's grave first. Like, is he going to go to Obito's grave, run into Anko, do the Genjutsu, then go to Rin's grave and steal the flowers, and then go on to destroy the village? In that case, I think that probably works better. That could work. I was just going to have the two graves next to each other since they would want to be buried next to each other anyways, or at least Obito would want to be buried next to Rin. I'm sure Kakashi would like to be buried next to each other as well. Yes, but then you have the issue of Kakashi being in the same spot when Kakashi Anko just leaves Obito first. unless you... Because cause how it goes is Kakashi then she's not going to run flowers. it over, so. No, no, Kakashi puts the flowers there, and Obito shows up after Kakashi leaves. So Kakashi's gone, Obito's no, there, then... Kakashi's there. Then Anko shows up. No, Obito... Obito's watching Kakashi. I'm looking at the screen right now. I know. Okay. So I, I don't know what you are missing here. So Kakashi, it, it goes exactly how it goes. When Obito's throwing the flowers, that's when Anko can show up. Okay. You want to do it that way? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Does that work? So that's, that's why I was asking about the timing thing. Okay. That's why. That's why. So Kakashi's just going to be gone in enough time before Onko shows up. Yeah. Personally, I think that's better I mean, yeah. than the other option that she's either there randomly or especially if she's there for Rin's grave, if she's there to visit Rin. Because, like, that's, like, the... Well, sure, no, that's the her friend. Option, I wouldn't do that. No, exactly, no. yeah. I wouldn't no. do that. When, if the other option I would do is she's at Obito's gravestone. Obito runs into her there. And then he goes to Rin's grave, and he's already resolved when he throws the flowers and stuff. So I would do one of those. Either that one, or the one you just said, where Kakashi leaves, then Anko shows up. Either yeah. way. Because in this case, you're not changing the scene. You're just adding on to it after the fact. Yeah. yeah you, you either add in the Anko part before or after, and either way works. Move. what do you think yeah. about these two funeral gravesite change scenes <laughs> either scene or both yeah yeah these would be good to add more character you know and involve Inko in the story you know more 
for sure. Which, which way would you prefer? Would you prefer Kakashi leaves, then Onko shows up while Obito is grabbing the flowers? Or would you prefer they're two separate gravestones, Obito runs into Onko, then he goes to where Kakashi is, and he's already resolved? Do you like option one or two better? Option um, two one would be good, you know. And then it's resolved, then, you know, Obito comes, yeah. All right, fair enough. That's I fine. personally kind of like Obito throwing the flowers when he's resolved rather than before. Oh, great, I guess he could just do the Genjutsu, then throw the flowers. Like, he gets interrupted first. That can work. But I like the idea that he throws the flowers when he's resolved, at the very least. You could have it be to where he's throwing the flowers because he thinks he's resolved. But then when Anko shows up, it proves to Obito, like, shatters his reality that he wasn't actually resolved. So now he has to personally, directly confront his past rather than just tossing away the flowers as like a personal thing with no one else around this is almost like his first step like a stepping stone to destroying the village can he do it to this one test subject experiment onko in front of him before he even goes to try and do it to the village i mean so in terms of the glass shattering thing i think there's two ways you can symbolically make it work you could either have obito's path basically shattered for a moment by Onko recognizing him or after he's dealt with Onko he shatters the glass to say that he's shattering his past that he thinks he is anyway hmm. of course because the pieces are still there the path is the past is still there it's not actually gone it's just broken to some extent uh, either way could symbolically work so you know yeah that's a matter of picking and choosing the way i personally see the scene in my head is we get the back view from the camera of obito discarding the flowers and then we hear anko's voice she says obito question mark and then we do like it like maybe obito like slightly raises his head like hunches his shoulders upwards and he, like looks back and then the camera directly cuts to anko holding a of her own thing of flowers intended flowers, for obito yeah. yes the flowers that obito just threw anko's holding another set of flowers i think that's awesome i mean i like that idea. idea i will say just as a quick thing scotty foster brought this up in chat and it is a good point obito wasn't buried that's why he's not in the gravestones that's why he's got the other thing the, for the the missing in action ninja who they don't have the bodies of. that's a good <laughs> that's point why he's yeah. there. okay that does make sense even then yeah, so maybe we should just leave them at separate spots for well, that reason, even then but... that, that's the reason why in universe that's not how that works in real life if you don't have a body you still bury them in a few in a, like a normal like a <laughs> cemetery you, you don't bury them in some missing cemetery place like, there's no separation there <laughs> it's just he's... well i mean it's a cemetery it's just a uh a separate cemetery but again that doesn't exist in real life to my knowledge at the very least it's just... maybe, maybe it does in japan i don't know okay <laughs> that's fair enough it's hilarious <laughs> uh that'd be interesting to look up i i think either way though you oh. can do the flowers thing because if you do the two separate scenes one option will be that uh uncle has the flowers when obito gets you her she's gonna get knocked out and so she's gonna drop the flowers it's gonna shatter and then obito's gonna shatter the other one so it's almost like both Obito and Rin, in this case, are getting shattered. So I, th I think mm -hmm. either way, have Uncle have the flowers and have that pot get shattered. Yeah, I love that. So now we get into the war arc, and we already discussed how this can change. I did realize something. Oh yeah, go ahead. Wait, did... Did, the... did did we write to oh, explain why Obito was so happy that that shot they stabbed Powing in a fight till they summit? You know. But in did we like why Anto Tawin was in love with Sade, but they didn't stop Sade from hurting Tawin. Exactly, yeah, when Obito says yeah. that's my boy after Sasuke stabs Karin. Um and Obito is pleased there. I don't see how that connects unless you're saying that Obito does the same thing to Anko, but in this case, no, why does Anko no. survive that? No, I think it would be more the no, way I would no. see it is more like Sasuke's doing what Obito couldn't, and he's, so okay. he's almost yeah. like, I like that. You're, you're on the right mean. path, mm -hmm. the quote unquote right yeah, path, even though know, he's manipulating him, but you get the point. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. That's what I mean. I do like that. Okay. 
Okay, so for the war arc, we've discussed how this can change Obito's character as well as Minato's character, but specifically Anko, we haven't discussed. So before we get deep into the war arc, early on, technically pre-war arc preparations for the war, Anko's kidnapped. Is there any scenario to where we can change this to where maybe Anko realizes that it was Obito 30 years ago as well? Or is that too goofy that Anko, of all people, realizes it twice and then just can't relay the information? And that's why she's captured. I would, hmm. I mean, honestly, I, my personal opinion, the, the best option here is to just use the Kimi Mauro rewrite conversation from that other stream so Anko doesn't get kidnapped in the first place. Okay. They just yeah. won't. She yeah. won't be there. She'll instead be in the war. So she's going to see Obito when Kakashi and Guy and all them do. Oh, and yeah. Because do Alko is irrelevant to that scene, I really feel like. Well, yes, you can tie in the Orochimaru stuff. In this case, we're doing so much more with Obito. And Orochimaru is not there when Alko is there anyway. So we're not even going to get a true Orochimaru Alko type of confrontation. Even with Kabuto, again, she's just knocked out. So it's not doing anything for her character or Kabuto's character for that matter. So let's just move yeah. her somewhere else. Move her to the Obito spot where we're actually going to do something with it. That's fine, yeah. Had Anto joined Kakashi and Dai, had, on had Anto joined them to fight to fight Obito. Okay. Yeah, she could just be one of the people. Instead of just Kakashi and Guy, you could just throw Anko into the mix. I I'd agree. Probably stronger yeah, I in this case. So she's a little bit more, yeah. you know, battle relevant. Maybe actually she'll use her curse mark. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Maybe not, I don't know. So, oh, okay, okay. I, 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 actually, hold on. Before we continue with the Warwick. Okay, really, really quick. I do want to address the Warwick thing one more thing. Okay, I'm going to say a lot here. So the first thing is, like, I agree. But, like, the way I was seeing it is, obviously, assuming that we were going to have Anko be captured, the way we would do it is she wouldn't say Obito out loud. That, that obviously wouldn't be revealed. But it'd be a thing to where Anko's basically thinking the same thing Kakashi's thinking before it's revealed. Anko's saying, wait, there's no way. Could it be him? Dot, 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 question mark? And then she's captured before she can reveal. Like, maybe she's like, Yamato, you won't believe it. It's... And then she's captured. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> So um, I can get that in that case. What I would probably do is maybe um, Kabuto could theoretically do this, but alternatively, using a character like Motoi, who's just a random guy who's never been in Leaf Village before, so mm -hmm. you can use him for this purpose. Anko will show up when, you know, Daedara and Onoki and Kabuto show up to fight and stop. And maybe Motoi can be a, some type of sense. I think he actually is a sensory ninja anyway, so this actually probably works well. Have Motui notice that Anko is under a subtle Genjutsu. This is the mm. Genjutsu that made her forget Obito. And then he's going to be like, in the middle of the fight, like, hold on, Anko, you know, something's wrong. I think, like, any he does the tap, the thing breaks her Genjutsu. Anko is just like, you know, undoes the Genjutsu. She's out of the Genjutsu. She's stunned for a moment because... All of a sudden, she feels like she's remembering something. And then, like, you know, the 20 seconds, however long it takes, she finally realizes what it is that she's forgotten all this time. It's Obito. And then she's about to say it, and then Kabuto captures her. You could do that, I think. Just use Motue, because, again, character is not in the Leaf Village. So it's not like you can say, why didn't he do it before then? <laughs> wasn't there. That can work. I have another idea as well. So this goes into, this ties into another thing that can happen. In this case, we're going to get more Ongo backstory to where part of the reason she gets Orochimaru's curse mark, despite being his teacher and student bond or whatever, she's at this point kind of given up on Obito and maybe out of her despair or something, maybe even trying to gain power, she goes to Orochimaru for the curse mark. Either way, I don't care how you do it, you relate Anko getting the curse mark, the purpose or intention there, to Obito in some way. So then in the war arc here, I like it better because because in this case, we're not revealing who Obito is, but we're revealing, we're, we're narrowing it down of who it could be to where Anko recognizes him. So it's got to be someone Anko recognizes, obviously. 
I think Anka would be interesting there if you're curious whether or not it's because it's a Leaf Village connection or because it's an Orochimaru connection. The way you do that, again, is when Anka realizes who it is, maybe her curse mark just starts involuntarily acting up from, like, an emotional flair. So now you're not sure. Is it a Konoha connection or is it an Orochimaru connection? It could be interesting as well. Something else I think you could play with, especially given what Orochimaru, you know, says to Tsunade in Search for Tsunade arc. You could have Anko almost support. So she's not going to know everything Orochimaru is actually doing behind the scenes, like, you know, the brutality of his experiments and stuff. But she can be thinking Orochimaru is doing some good, and Orochimaru essentially is manipulating her in this case to support his research. And what he's doing is basically telling Anko, like, hey, help me out, and we'll be able to bring your... He won't say Obito, but he'll be referencing Obito, like, your friend back. Or even he can say your lover or whatever he wants to say. I think your friend probably works better. Mm. And so the, obviously Edo Tensei is the thought there. But stuff like the curse bag, all that stuff is just going to be involved with Anko wanting to bring Obito back. And Orochimaru is going to use that to help, you know, master Edo Tensei. Yeah. Okay. Well, Move, what do you think about all this so far with the war arc stuff? Out of curiosity. Yeah, it's re it would really be good for the store, you know, to have Inko, you know, see the Obito reveal, you know, to, like, have more character interaction with, like, you know, Abato, you know, there's my guy and others like that. It would be help it to have more and make Abato more fleshed out. Absolutely. Okay. Also, if you're, it really works better if uh, Kabuto captures Anko. But having Kabuto, like, very subtly allude to things about Obito, especially now that um, Anko's, like, figured it out, he could do some, like, kind of, I guess, villain... I, I don't know what specifically he would say in this case, but he can say something to kind of, like, aggravate Anko a little bit. So it's kind of tying back to a, what Orochimaru did, mm -hmm. but also, like... I don't really know how to word this because I don't have dialogue things in mind, but the point is, it's both a hint towards Obito and just adding to Kabuto as a villain, slash Orochimaru. Okay. Oh, yeah. And also, we can't forget about the, we can't, oh, can't forget about the scene about Kabuto showing Anto to Obito. We can't, we can't forget about that scene. Yeah, if we capture her. But we were bringing up the possibility now, if we're moving on to this, of she just never gets kidnapped, which is the possibility we brought up in the Kimi Maro rewrite if you haven't seen that video go check that video out it's a freaking banger I'm telling you as well as a shoji rewrite but with that being said <laughs> yeah so okay we're not having Anko be kidnapped what do we do with her because I like the idea of doing something with her than just doing nothing with her the problem is I feel like it might be goofy to have the eternal rivals Naruto and Might Guy the connection closeness that they have there with Naruto coming and Anko all three of them come to save Naruto. Yeah, Anko's the one who removes the three tells his shenanigans from Naruto's back. So, two things I'll say in this. One, I agree, but real quick, to be fair with this Anko rewrite, we're kind of like rewriting all of Naruto. So Anko's going to be like more important throughout all of Naruto. So it's sure. not going to be as goofy yeah. to have her there, just based on that alone. Second, we could always just have her show up when the mask comes off like she won't be mm. there during the chin cherokee fight but she can show up like at the very end e either help break the mask she shows up then or she literally just shows up when the mask comes off okay is one option she could also show well. up when the ten thousand or how, how, fifty thousand shinobi show up the shinobi when alliance else shows well. up and then just have her obito reaction there yeah yeah uh do we do okay so do we have her in a division in this case? For example, do we have her in Kakashi's division? Or do we have her in some other division? Probably. Well, it's, okay, so if she's going to show up with Guy and Kakashi, yeah. then yeah, I, I would have her in that division. Um, It just yeah. makes sense. She's part of that class. Mm -hmm. She knows them well. Um, She's a short, mid-range, you know, all-range fighter, basically. So I think she kind of fits with the fighting style of the division anyway. So 
probably would say put it because it doesn't make sense to put over like gar's division and then have her <laughs> yeah. show up at it like yeah you yeah. know what i'm saying like like the only other division i could see her being in is maybe like the specialist division or something but they don't show up when guy and kakashi do so i feel like she's gotta be with them if she's gonna show up when they do okay yeah so move i want to hear from you for this one how do you think anka would react if she's with Guy and Kakashi when Obito's mask comes off and she realizes that this is Obito, the man she recognized 30 years ago who destroyed the village, who she tried to stop but just couldn't. The love of her life from back in the day. Yeah, I think it would be like similar to like Sakura when like Sasuke left the village and then like Anko would start crying and then that would be like that for the story. Yeah, it would be yeah similar to like Sakura. Okay, I can imagine her, like, falling to her knees just in disbelief. She just can't believe it. Kami, what do you think? Almost like uh, Sarada in Chapter 80 with the whole That's omnipotence good. thing. Like, yeah. not the same reasons, yeah. but, like, the same fall to the knee thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what would Obito say in this one? What would Obito say in this way, why then? Yeah, because he did have so a strong reaction to Minato. talk to, Minato. to Kagashi the same as before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At what point does he confront Anka? Then, is it early on, or is it towards the middle or late? Hmm. What do I want to make the most sense? So he never really addresses my guy. Told... But in this case, I feel like Anka's more important. With this in mind... Yeah, so in this rewrite, Anko's more important than Mike guy. So maybe it would be better to just have Anko show up later, so that we can have Kakashi have his moment now. Mm -hmm. And then Anko have a moment later, so it's not, like, too crowded, too clustered in an awkward way. It might be better to just space them out based on that alone. In fact, Or what? you're just going to have to kind of combine the two, I think. Because it would be very weird to just have the normal Kakashi conversation. Then he looks to the left or the right and is like, <laughs> and you, Anko, I don't know what to say to you. Thanks for remembering me. But I feel like, honestly, in that case... Anko would have to, like, make a comment about remembering him, and Obito would almost have to, like, brush it off and act yeah. like it was meaningless. The fact that she remembered him means nothing. Or he can even do his whole nobody thing, be like, um, you know, like, you remembered, like, no, you remembered, no, I don't know what words to say, but, like, <laughs> there's, no the point is, there's no meaning, yeah, like, there's no meaning to you remembering that name or that existence. Right. Obito Uchiha is dead. Stop. Or that something. Would own the ideal me. Or oh, oh, Obito Uchiha died alongside Rin Nohara. Something like that. Um, mm. Yeah, but having her late. So I feel like specifically considering about... the timeline of Obito's trauma, you have Rin dying, then you have Anko confronting him in this rewrite, and then you have Minato. You do the same thing here. Kakashi's there when the mask comes off. Minato's there later. So you have this middle part where so Anko comes Anko in. Yeah. Yes, keeping that consistent. I think that but, work. What, but what would that middle part be? When Anko, so Anko in this, if you're going to do the middle part route, obviously you could just do the order. But I think just for situational awareness, it makes more sense that Anko doesn't show up if you're going to go this route. So Anko would just have to show up when the rest of the alliance does. And then she's just going to like make a comment about obito the problem so my problem with this is then it almost feels goofy to do the scene then because it's just like so random obito's already over yeah. it like this whole reveal thing so it almost feels like it needs to just be when kakashi does it but then you, you have like it, that's the trickiest part about this i think what about what are the ten tail what's the ten tail scene ten tails which ten tails like when the ten tails is revived no, I mean like when I mean like before Obito talked to Minto, he talked to Anto a bit. Oh, he bring up Anto when he talked when he talked to Minto. Yeah, I hate to say it, I don't think there needs to be a long scene between Anko and Obito, considering their relationship at this point. In fact, I almost think the subtlety nuance is better for this angle to where maybe he sees Anko. But he's like trying to focus on fighting someone else. So like he starts walking away from Anko and like he like turns his back to her. Anko just screams Obito and like reaches her arm out towards her. But like obviously isn't going to like run up to him or anything. Obito hearing Anko's like cry of dismay. Maybe like he flashes back to the last time 
Anko screamed Obito's name when like they were at the the gravesite together. Maybe that can happen. So I th- hearing Anko scream like that startles Obito. It like makes him stop walking and like he's like has like a huh kind of reaction. Uh, but then he like dismisses. He just brushes off and just keeps walking afterwards. Maybe he looks back, doesn't say anything. Maybe even like like Sasuke, like what we were saying. She he says thank you and runs away or something. <laughs> Maybe not that, but you know. I, I like the no, idea of just a short thank scene. You, but I think, I think just regardless of the timing, pretty short and sweet probably is for the best. So she says like Obito and then Obito flash regardless, have Obito quickly flash back to that moment. And then from there, I think depending on whether it's with Kakashi or later. You either, if it's with Kakashi, I would probably do the line of like, you know, there's no meaning to that name anymore, or Obito Uchi has died a long time ago, or something like that. If it's the it. later scene, maybe just don't have the words. He just flashes back, makes some sort of expression for the reader to see, and then he just continues on. I got something really interesting. You, I think you're going to love this. Hopefully. Hopefully you love this. Okay. So my idea was oh, Obito starts oh. walking away. Anko screams his name, reaching out. And that like startles Obito. He stops walking. He hesitates for a moment before continuing. We're going to do your idea to where afterwards he's like, he's Obito Jiho is no longer here. He does whatever. I like the idea. Change what I said. What we're going to have is back at the gravesite 20 years ago. Obito is going to reach out for Anko. Anko's going to scream Obito or something. And just as what happened with Rin, Obito's going to unconsciously activate Kamui, go through her neck for a second. And then she like starts running away or something. So then flashing back here, you can do the same thing. Maybe he's going to go kill her. Maybe he has like a kunai in his hand or something. Anko screams his name. He, again, like, opens his eye wide and just, like, stabs through her, through, like, Kamui's intangibility and, like, pulls out the kunai with, like, no blood or anything on it. And then he, like, goes past her or does what? Maybe then someone saves Anko. The point is, I like that as an idea. You bring back the thing to where right after Rin's death, he goes to grab Rin, but he intangibly just has Kamui activated still. Just subconsciously. Thoughts? Yeah. I think that's not pretty cool. In this case, what I might say is Anko tries to reach out to Obito or even hug him. And rather than Obito reaching through Rin, it's going to be the reverse. Anko's just going to pass through Obito, who doesn't really. I don't want Obito in this case to try hugging Anko or whatever. I think it's going to be Anko tries to reach out. She goes through him, which symbolically is Anko not getting through to obito she's so close she's passing she's so close yet so far she's passing right through him so she's not actually getting through to him i would go that route and then you do the symbolic parallel to in the war when a similar thing happens maybe it's not necessarily like trying to hug obito or something but like attack him or whatever the point is she's gonna pass through him again and maybe he like punches her or kicks her or something after but like, so, so you maybe you get three layers. So like the first time with Rin, Obito passes through her. The second time, Anko passes through Obito. He doesn't do anything other than eventually get Jutsu her. But then this third time around, because he's become more convicted, rather than doing nothing to her slash get Jutsuing her, he'll actually like hit her. Maybe don't stab her to death, but like, you know, kick her into the ground or something. That half works. I feel like it half doesn't. I like my idea better because considering obito's quote-unquote redeemed or any whatever he like changes to naruto's side however you want to say it i like the idea that just for a moment anko does get through to obito which is why it's his choice he's the one subconsciously activating intangibility but just for a moment so he's doing it for a moment and he like pulls back he like convicts himself once again and then he goes for the kill I like that better than just Anko okay, so not being you're able to referring, reach him. Okay, this is the third one. You're saying that, like, this sounds like the third one. You're saying that he's going to, like, quote-unquote, go for the kill, but then he's going to activate Kamui so he goes through her instead of hurting her, and then he does it again and actually hits her. But what about that middle one? The, the point is the middle one, I don't particularly like Obito, like, 
you know, reaching out to Anko there. Personally, I prefer the reverse. Yeah. Anko reaches out to Obito and doesn't get through to him well, in I, that scene. With that, she almost yeah, does. I like the idea of Obito reaching out to Anko to kill her from the get-go. Anko screaming Obito's name in like a very tragic way in that split second moment before obito touches him okay, her so it's the same that's thing. when she activates or he activates so when you said reaching out the connotation i was thinking of is like reaching out to grab her hand or hug her or something if you mean like he's reaching out because he's gonna choke her or stab yeah, her or whatever that's what i was thinking and then he does that that's fine that's that's completely different mm -hmm. that's not what i thought you meant i'd be fine with that okay okay cool yeah uh move what do you think which of these do you like better yeah, that, that was one was good where um, Arbuto tried to reach to, you know, do the same thing he did to Conan, and then, um, you know, that that one's the best one, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, so he's going to go through her. Like, he's going to stop himself from hitting her, basically, because he's going to pass through her. He, like, pulls back for a second, like, whoa. Wasn't expecting it himself. I, I, did, I did think about something right now. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, you know how I in in Kakashi and Obito talk and how Obito say like I like you can only find true happiness if you abandon all your tomlad. I was like in did we like Kakashi say then riding till went till Anto then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either Kakashi or Naruto should be the what one to that? bring it up. In either the, the Ninshu space or the Kamui dimension. Either way. But I feel like it'd be worse if Kakashi brings it up because then I feel like it he wouldn't draw to the growth of like saying, oh, in order to support the Naruto, I'll kill the current o you, the current Obito. I feel like he wouldn't do that if he's bringing up the fact Good that point. he let Anko survive. Whereas I feel like that's more of a Naruto thing to bring up anyways. Plus, yeah, would, that, it's, would because Kakashi Naruto says something i forgot specifically what it was that he pointed out i think it might have just been like that stop matching yourself as hokage the point is it's like then why were you doing this why were you testing me why were you doing that the, this would be another thing mm -hmm. why did you pull back anko and with this in mind this actually perfectly ties into what i was about to, i wanted to say which is i would have obito at one of the two probably particularly the third situation of passing through people so this warwick one have Obito question why he did that. Be like, did I just waver or did mm -hmm. I do that on purpose? Like, why yeah. why did I do that or something? Have him question is the point. And then that, because he already is kind of doing this. That's the whole point of testing Naruto anyway. But that just, yeah. it's just adding onto the list, essentially. Yeah, just one subtle line. I like it. And I did will. And, and I also will. I did, I did, I did will always explain why Obito does so angry when Hana helped. Naruto. Jimmy a pal over that. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So, okay. He could do um a thing. I mean, a, so I, I think a good parallel here in this case would be that when Naruto loses Neji, Hinata, the Onko parallel there, mm. is there for Naruto. Mm. When Obito lost Rin... Kakashi was knocked out, and Anko wasn't there. I mean, nobody was there for Obito, which is the contrast. The only one there is Madara Shlazetsu whispering in his ear, you know what I mean? The wrong person was there. So, I like that as a concept, because, you know, Naruto has basically luck on his side in this case. He not is there. That wasn't the case for Obito. Yeah. Because like one that. of the themes is that, you know, like, your friends, your support system is what gets you to where you are like th they are monumentally important so when obito doesn't have that you could see what happens when you don't have friends so casting aside your friends would be a bad thing because well if there's no friends for you like what might happen kind of thing so i think it works that works especially well when you have the symbolism of all the hands pushing naruto's back forward as he goes to confront his obstacles mm -hmm. or even when he's doing the sasuke, final rasengan against sasuke, sasuke doesn't have that here he could do yeah and sasuke is like, no one by contrast yeah i wasn't necessarily yeah, thinking works. of the rasengan though it works there as well you could I, I was thinking more like the opening when or even the video games where people are pushing naruto's back forward to either let way walk. i mean it, it applies in all of these metaphorical scenes yeah exactly sasuke doesn't have it naruto yeah. <laughs> it's a reason mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, now we're getting towards mid to late war. So, is she going to have any scenes with Jubito? I don't think so, because that's more Minato's time to shine. So, keeping that in mind... Yeah, that's more Minato and Naruto. Even Kakashi's yeah. not there for that. So, I think remove Anko... I mean, not to say remove Anko, but, like, she's just with the Alliance, doing whatever, yeah. fighting Modder. Mm -hmm. I don't care what she's doing. Um... You took that over to Wimmer hurt on Tome when you talk when you talk to me and Tome. Yeah. So bring her up. are we gonna have resolution with Anko, or were the previous scenes the resolution to that whole little mini thread of a story, character arc, whatever? You could hypothetically, because you have Kakashi and Minato confronting Obito after he loses the Tintails, you could throw Anko in there as well, as well as any point. When Madara is a Tentels, have her have a scene with Obito. You could do that. I th I mean, I hate to say this, but honestly, it might be better in to have Anko kind of off to the side. Maybe she's close by, not too far away. She's there to hear. She's there for Obito to hear her. Kakashi shows up. Like maybe Sasuke's running towards Obito. Anko's running towards him to stop Sasuke. Then Kakashi shows up and. You know, Kakashi's going for the kill. Anko can't stop him. That's where Minato comes in to stop Kakashi. And, you know, realistically, I would agree with Minato. Kakashi should be the one talking to Obito in that scene. It really shouldn't be Anko's time to shine. I don't really know where you would have the most resolution with them. Like, yeah, maybe before the Infinite Tsukuyomi, um, similar to what Obito and Kakashi are working together, uh, Anko can be there as well. Maybe she has a brief chance to like talk to Obito. I don't think you're gonna have anything major. It's not gonna be like Higashi and Obito's resolution. You're not gonna have the whole, you know, them running in front of Kaguya's ash bones, final moments. Obito well, comboing. Maybe Obito can combo back to Anko for a brief moment or something. Well, yeah, know. no, here's the thing with that. Me. So, okay, now we get into this aspect of it. You're gonna hate me for this. So we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna roll with it for now. Anko is there with Team 7 fighting Kaguya. She just is in Sasuke Susano. So she, she avoids Infinite Tsuki. We're just gonna go with it for now. It just does happen. How do we write this <laughs> Anko Obito dynamic in the Kaguya section of the story? So you're gonna. Okay, everyone is. All the soccer fans are going to hate this. Yeah. But all the Anko fans are going to love what I'm about to say. <laughs> oh, Anko boy. with her curse mark is the one who gives Obito the chakra to get to the other dimensions rather than Oh, Sakura. that's or you can have so both, good. But you could have oh, both, oh. to be fair. But I think no matter what, both having works. both takes away from the other. So for the sake of the Anko rewrites, we're throwing Anko in there. Okay, I like and that. Sakura's going to get her moment with the final Team 7 part, which Obito's out of anyway. Anko... I guess can kind of be out of that too somehow. I don't know. Like, well, you could you could have both as long as they each serve their own function. So Sakura's function is yeah, giving the chakra. Yeah, it can't be the same. That's the problem. Yeah, Obito's so. is finding or, or using Kamui. Maybe Anko through the curse mark, they explain some curse mark shenanigans to where it can locate things. And so maybe Anko's the one that the sense, sensory she's aspect. a sensory ninja. So she senses... If Sasuke is in a dimension energy. or not. Could work. I don't know. Oh, especially just if she like... Just the nature energy and the curse mark. His curse mark chakra or whatever. Since they both have Orochimaru's curse mark. Yeah, actually, because in our rewrite... Oh, uh, no, but in our Kimimaru rewrite, Sasuke got rid of the curse mark when he brought Orochimaru. But he so could still have the curse mark that. chakra um, is a thing. If you don't lose the chakra. Yeah. Well, uh, then we gotta really rewrite the war arc and the Jugo thing, so I don't know about that one. I wouldn't do that, personally. I think I would just have a... Because the fact of the matter is nature energy has sensory abilities anyway, so the nature okay. energy going to Obito's eye just lets him sense it. I don't think it needs anything crazy to explain that. That's six um, path shenanigans, yeah. which you could just take away in this case, since Anko's there. Well, besides Duel Monkey, Echo, Sharingan, Kakashi making less sense, but that's besides the point. It has Alko's curse mark power infused in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that works. Six that works. I love it, bro. <laughs> that I, that so, also okay, works with the Kakashi Anko dynamic. <laughs> it's yeah. the power of all their teammates so, coming together, including Anko. 
<laughs> I almost you know, the, the dumbest thing about this. It's like I almost feel like Alko should just be on Kakashi's team, but then what about Rims? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so okay. With this being oh, said, don't change, too much. don't change too much. Move. How would you incorporate Anko into the Kaguya section of the story? Would you do this or would you add I something can use else? The Go ahead. Of course. Uh, yeah, hmm. yeah, the po- po- the part where Anko replaces Sakura and the dimension part was um, a good change, and you know could have like Anko like have a curse mark form too. Ooh. Like, you know, the stages. That could be her way of scaling up. I like that. That's interesting, yeah. They do some Curse Mark shenanigans where she just has Curse Mark Stage 2. I love it. Yeah. It's just the first time she uses it. I do have, I do have an idea. You okay. could do what Stone 4 did and had, and had Obito tear off the eye and date them to Kakashi while the ad ball and tailing him. That's what Stone 4 did. So you could do that. And did we let you want to? Okay. That could work. Uh, there was also the other possibilities you brought up uh, during the scene as well. The one from the Reddit in particular. I think you sent it to Cam Cam. Yeah, this, me, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's this. Okay. There was this possibility that you brought up as well. I'll just read this out loud. This is from the Reddit, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so someone from Reddit says, female character, Onko, from, in fact, let me move my face cam, since I already know it's going to be in the way. I already know it. Don't worry, Chad, I got you. Don't worry, Scotty. I'm there for you. Okay. Female character, Onko, from Team Minato's age group, who was in love with Obito under influence of Rochmar's curse mark. This is interesting. This is a different way to present this whole idea. She blamed Rin for Obito being buried alive and orchestrated Rin's death. <laughs> That's a little bit crazy. Anko's the one it that is. led to Rin's death in this case. But alright, hey, we're down for this different rewrite, alright. Then, here's where we get into it. Then when Toby Mask comes off, and he says to Kakashi, you let Rin die. The female character arrives, saying she killed Rin, then Obito and girl who was in love with him both die from twin snake mutual death representing a lover's double offing themselves beside. Yeah, that idea is too crazy. It's 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 too crazy, yeah. But I there's something there, considering Obito dies. So maybe instead of maybe instead of Obito using Kamui on the bone ash that was gonna hit Kakashi, maybe Anko's the one that jumps in front of Kakashi instead. Or, this is a bit goofy, but maybe you have it to where Anko jumps in front of Obito, and Obito somehow saves Anko and Kakashi somehow, and it only hits himself. I don't know how it would work. But it it could also parallel back to the Neji scene, to where Neji throws himself in front of Hinata, while Hinata throws himself in front of Naruto. So it's, again, coming back to that idea. Because... She's Anko's supposed to be the Hinata connection parallel to Naruto. So it's all, really almost like symbolic because Obito is the reason Neji and Hinata did that in the first place. The reason Neji died. The reason Hinata almost died. So in this case, bringing it back to here, Obito is making amends for almost killing the Hinata parallel to Anko through saving Anko in a weird way. <laughs> And then, and and there you can have Obito say a final word to Anto and Kakashi. Exactly. So instead of a long speech specifically to Naruto, he can also have some words to Anko as well for that resolution. I think that can work. Move, how would you do this scene, do you think? Move? 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 Yeah, I would do that scene like um, you know, you could have like you could also have like Abito survive, like have to get some like tail mm-hmm. beast chakra from Naruto, has like replacement for the ten tails lost. Okay, that can work. Mm-hmm. That can work for I, sure. I I did realize something. That the only one issue that that one issue. Do we still had Obito being in love with Win? Did that still 
And that's still a thing. Yeah, so in fact, I think this in particular is very important for this rewrite. To reiterate, so this helps Obito's character, in my opinion. This substantiates and helps to explain to the audience the deep-rooted connection and emotions Obito felt towards Rin. In this case, Obito acknowledges that Anko was there for him. Anko was a friend. Anko not only had a crush on Obito, but just as Obito loved Rin, Anko loved Obito. But Obito also acknowledges that the reason he loves Rin isn't just because of his circumstances, because otherwise he would have gone with Anko on that day instead of erasing her memory. And Anko could have saved him. It's because Anko could never save him. That's proof that he loved Rin more than just for her circumstances or her appearances or whatever. Because he could have been happy with Anko. But this goes back to his like uh, daydreams or whatever that Naruto refers to it. If him like thinking the what if of the future of what if he survived? How would that go? Oh, I'd be up with Anko. I'd be so happy. The fact that it doesn't go that route shows reason why he loves Rin and why it's so deep rooted as it is. More so than just saying the... end. because Rin was a soul light of his whole world, his pitch black hell. This is getting into why. Why does he love Rin when he didn't love Anko? What did Rin have that Anko didn't have? That's what this explores, whether implicitly or directly told to the audience through an additional scene of something that and, Obito explains about Rin. But it's also, it could just and, be that some people, you can just love someone anyways, for whatever reason. Attack on Titan does this. Uh, spoilers for Attack on Titan. Ymir loves a guy that's crazy and bad and blah, blah. The point is Ymir did love King Fritz. And spoiler warning is done. Okay. How bad it is. But yeah, the fact that that exists is just insane. Conway, I don't know if you could hear any or all of this, but if you're back, what no, do you think? You can hear everything. You can um, hear everything. Okay. I just oh. went to make some yogurt while I was up there. Um, so real quick, something I want to say earlier is assuming it Kabuto does capture Anko, you could have Kabuto essentially using Anko as a pawn, try to power up her curse mark. Uh, to make it stage two, you know, all that jazz. Just for the sake of, like, he's going to use her as a pawn in some way, so he wants to power up first. That can work. Uh, but then that could be the explanation for why this she is, even has the second stage. By the way, this is ridiculous. Instead of having... Okay, if we're having it, them be kidnapped, instead of Anko be the one to recognize Obito right before she's kidnapped, what if... This is, again, silly to, like, have the audience speculate <laughs> uh, on Obito's identity, but in this case, you have... Um, Obito recognize Anko specifically. Kabuto is like using her, playing his cards at the same time where he reveals all the Edo Tensei, yeah. including Madara. In this case, Anko is like one of his trump cards of like, oh, I got Anko. That means something to yeah, you, like, doesn't it? I know it? who you are. Yeah, like... if you kill me, you'll never yeah, get her back. He... <laughs> or so he says something like, um, you know, like. Don't, you recognize this woman, don't you? Or, like, um, you wouldn't have a problem with me using her as a pawn, would you? And you have Obito <laughs> in the manga, at least having the dot, dot, dot of, like, you know, pause thing. Yeah. Like, uh, Kabuto yeah. is basically using as a threat. Could That's work. That's good. Oh, that male. Oh, that male. I don't know if you couldn't have both, but you would only need one. Both could still work, but I don't know if it'd be necessary or even good or better. Move, what do you think? Would you have one or the other, or would you have both? To where Anko's the one that recognizes Obito right before she's captured, or Obito recognizing Anko when Kabuto's presenting her as a trump card, basically. Would you have both, or would you have one or yeah. the other? Yeah, like the trump card one. Like, showing like someone from Abito's past and like getting his reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like when Abito, like showed his face to like um, Kasami. Personally, I definitely would at the very least keep the second one because it gives two stages. The first is Kabuto saying, I know you're not Madara. Like, I, you go by Toby. Oh, you're going by Madara. Oh, that's now. good, bro. Boom. I have Madara. The second stage, 
I know you're not just not Madara. I, I know, know who you, who are, you specifically. are. Yes. You know this you know and, this woman cuz I know who you are. Mm. And Obido's got another like that damn Orochimaru moment. He's like how much does this guy know kind of thing. So I like mm. the two stages of that. It, it builds up Kabuto and it builds towards the reveal of who Obito is. It's not just yeah. he's not Madara. It's also he knows Anko. Like he knows, oh, yeah. seemingly might know Kakashi even. Like it's tying back things, so exactly. I definitely would keep that. I don't think it's a problem to also have the Anko. Oh, his name is Boom gets eaten thing because she's <laughs> gonna be knocked out in the next scene anyway. So it's not mm-hmm. like she's gonna see Obito. Obito sees her this time, but I would definitely keep that second one for sure. Okay, I like that. I do. I, I definitely like that. that. I don't really like that. How do we show that Anko and Obito were friends in the past? How do we show that? We just show it in the flashbacks. Like, they're sitting next to each other in the academy. Maybe they're eating a dongo together. You just have flashbacks. Why there more? Just tweak the ones already there. I mean, like, before the overview. You could show them, like, in the tuning museums or something like that. That as well, yeah. Bro, that could work. It doesn't need to be a big scene. I know, I got it. Just have Alco in a given scene. I, I got exactly what you do with the tuning exams. Doing the flashback to that montage tuning exam was in it. You have Mike Guy kick Obito or whatever. He loses. He's sitting on the railing. And then you have Anko bring over healing ointment. <laughs> As he's sitting there watching Kakashi's fight. <laughs> Another parallel. Another parallel. What I'm thinking, though, personally... Because you were getting into this earlier when I was upstairs about why Obito loves Rin. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking, I want to give it, I mean, obviously you can't just have, he just did, nothing more to it. Parsley, I would like to give a little bit of a reason. Okay. Something you could do is, given the flashbacks, you know, Rin takes care of Obito. Hey, I'm always watching you. You're going to become Okage. He's giving her encouragement. Anko could essentially think all the same things as Rin here, but there's a key difference. Hmm. Anko will never vocalize them to the same way Rin does. So while Anko is watching Obito, and she does care about Obito, she's not going to be the one to say those things that meant something to Obito, that really mattered to Obito, that actually encouraged him. She'll want to, but maybe she just doesn't have the courage to do it. Not like Hinata was shy. She exactly. struggled Another to, of to that. say things to Naruto. She was always watching. But it's not for, It's not really until the pain arc, honestly, mm-hmm. that Hinata's really, like, vocalizing these things. And then the war arc, of course, you know, like, she really vocalizes it then. So the war arc is essentially when Anko is going to finally start to say some things, but she never will have in the past. Which is going to be part of the reason why Obito loved Rin specifically, because Rin always was there and she was always saying the nice things that Obito liked you know so I think that's a good key difference that can help explain you know because even then even after Anko says all this stuff there's still no reason to it's no reason to be like oh Anko is better because it's like well Rin has been doing that since day one she's always been there I can understand kind of thing yeah Um, do you have do we have What's up, Sice? I also oh. have another one you might like. It also gives Anko a feeling of regret because she never had the courage to say whatever thing in whatever scene. And so she almost feels guilt because it's like, if only I had spoken up. Maybe, like, actually, you you brought up earlier. She runs away when she sees Obito. Mm-hmm. She's going to be thinking, if only I said something to Obito. And it's going to translate backwards, like, all these mm-hmm. times. If only I said something here. If only I said something there. Um, just to give her a sense of regret, basically. And you have no idea how well this works based on something I was thinking. So, okay, get the, this works on so many levels because it's, it's funny because I was actually thinking the same thing for a different reason. I was thinking the scene to where mm-hmm. Obito like has the, I think it was flowers. It might've been like a box of chocolates or something behind his back, um, to give to Rin. Mm-hmm. And yeah. When they're like all brought up to like a secret meeting, but then it's actually there for Kakashi's graduation thing. I think it might've been Kakashi's birthday. It was his Joni promotion. Joni promotion. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. You could have Anko realize what was about to happen. And like, she sees how it goes down, but like, because she's shy, all she can do is think of like, I'm secretly happy that didn't happen the way it could have. 
it, maybe that's like a bad thing but like it, the, the point is that that's a scene spe specifically to show that she's shy and this can work for later Anko in the story is anything but shy so because of what happened with Obito and like you were saying with the scene of like oh if only I'd said something to him this is where Anko has grown to where now she is anything that but shy because a, a direct result of what happened to Obito this is like almost her torturing herself to be someone that she's not almost like a consequence but again like character growth because now she's not shy now she will absolutely say anything the moment she thinks it so that something like obito will never happen again in fact going to the war arc, when the mask first comes off anko can revert back to a shy person to where all she can do is what she had only done in the past that led to all these wounds in the first place going back to that to where all she can do is say obito but she can't say anything more than that at first it's in if we're going this far with it the kaguya dimension to where now she's back to being anko to where now she can be vulnerable and have an actual full-on conversation with obito rather than being shy to where she can reveal her true feelings how she felt all along just how rin could have yeah yep. i so... think that could work one small thing i would say is in the box of chocolates thing rather than having Anko think about how amazing it is. I would just have her do a sigh of relief. Yeah. But I would maybe have her, if it, a thing to think about would be like, should I stop Obito? Because she knows it's about Kakashi. And so to some extent, she wants to stop Obito to save him from embarrassment. But maybe she's worried about Ob uh, Obito thinking that she's trying to mess up him and Rin or something. And she doesn't want to. Yeah. You know, yeah. she's like worried about things okay. like that. So she's like, I don't know what to do. And so she just has a sigh of relief that like, you know, nothing came out of it. But it's just a sign to show that she's not confident at times. And that's why she doesn't speak up. And then, you know, later on, because she's starting the Naruto series from our timeline perspective as a confident person. Maybe yeah. even Orochimaru helps her with that growth. Like it, it's the early Orochimaru being a good sensei aspect yeah. to where... Yes, he starts to get manipulative later, but like initially, he is actually just helping her overcome her problems. <laughs> like, in fact, again, yeah. going back to the curse mark, that can be why she goes there because she's too shy. And look what happened to Obito. So now she wants the curse mark as like a physical representation of her change as well. Uh, it could almost be like a flaw it, in that case. That that's the reason she got it. She's trying to overcome. It, it also works really mark. well with the whole Orochimaru and Kabuto knowing about Anko Obito's connection. Exactly. Because in this case, you know, Orochimaru is her sensei, so he Pro knows it. all Pro about it. this. And of course, Kabuto will know through Orochimaru, <laughs> and so that ties things back to that Obito scene. Yes. Like okay. The idea. So one more thing, and you're gonna love this as well. Connecting the Sakura Hinata dynamic as well. So after the the secret Jonin present graduation thing for kakashi to where that didn't work out maybe we're gonna have a thing to where hinata you know ironic anko was gonna wait around there for a moment and she was gonna go say something to obito in that moment but she doesn't you know why it's because maybe rin maybe someone else i think rin works best they're gonna go celebrate go out to eat so maybe rin like puts her arm around Anko's shoulders, like, come on, Rin, let's go. And they're like all buddy, buddy going to walk together. And, and at that point, Anko can't just be like, no, I got to stay for Obito or whatever. In this case, they do go to, out to eat because she's shy. She just goes along with it. In this going out to eat scene of Kakashi's celebration, maybe Obito's sitting next to Kakashi. That doesn't matter. They're doing their own thing. The point is watching Anko and Rin interact. Maybe you're going to love this. Maybe Anko Rin. is asking Rin, in particular Rin, because Anko knows about Rin. In fact, maybe this could be another reason why Anko never makes a move. Arguably the same reason Hinata never makes a move, because Hinata knows Naruto's in love with Sakura, so she would never want to do that to Naruto. So, in this case, Anko could be doing the same thing. You could even reveal that Anko... Anko reveals... Maybe. Maybe. This might be going too far. Anko... Could, first of all, the point of the scene is that Anko's trying to get advice from Rin of how to be more likable to Obito... But then you could also have Anko reveal that Obito does like Rin. In fact, this can be the reason that Rin basically refuses to get with Obito. Because, like, she almost seems, like, disgusted at the idea to some extent. Especially when Obito dies and, like, Kakashi's like, Rin, Obito <laughs> loved you. Like, get it through your head. Do you not realize? Like, what do you mean, me? No, it's, don't be, don't have a crush on me. <laughs> it's Obito. <laughs> 
So and when my wife, but my wife will for you. <laughs> yeah, so it can go back to this to where that's why Rin doesn't want to get with Obito. It's not because she doesn't actually or whatever. She doesn't care either way, maybe. It doesn't matter. The point is that she knows that Anko is in love with Obito. And she doesn't want to do that to her friend, Anko, who she's helping get together with Obito. In the same way, Sakura was trying to get Hinata together with Naruto. Yeah, but, uh, what I was going to say is maybe Rin can think that, um, especially given that she just has feelings. So Rin cares about Obito, obviously. Hmm. And we're not going to take yeah, that away. Exactly. But she knows that she likes kakashi like yeah she has feelings for kakashi and because of that rin feels like she anko is just a better person maybe to rin's perspective anko is everything she is just not as confident but she does romantically like obito whereas rin it's not that she romantically dislikes obito it's just that she knows her hearts with kakashi mm-hmm. you know, characters can or people in general can like two people but there's that one person that they just like more. And they know that. And then, so they know that that's who they should be thinking about. That's who should they focus on. And then they, you know, get rid of the romantic feelings for the other person. So in this case, Rin can be thinking, Anko deserves Obito. And Obito deserves Anko, mm-hmm. not Rin. Because Anko is better for Obito. Yeah. So that can be her thought yeah. process. So she's not going to stop, like, encouraging Obito. Because from her perspective, that's her friend. She wants Obito to be Hokage. She wants Obito to succeed. So she's not going to, like, avoid him. But, yeah. In yeah. fact, this could work even more to where Rin isn't just doing it because she's a nice person. Rin wants Obito to succeed because she wants to look to Obito, a person of success, in order for herself to also have inspiration to succeed as well. That sounds weird, but the point is that she wants to be a person worthy of Kakashi. So therefore, she's going to be the best version of herself. Part of that is supporting her teammates. She wants to be a good teammate to Obito so that she can be a good person so that she can think that she's worthy to be with Kakashi as well, who she looks at as so high and mighty, almost in the same way as Obito, to where Obito's looking at Kakashi as a rivalry of like, oh my god, he's so good, I have to be good as well. In this case, it's almost like, a not bitter rivalry, but like a healthy dynamic to where uh, Rin's looking at Kakashi like, wow, he's so good. I have to be just as good too to be worthy to be his teammate and maybe even more or something like that. So that's why she, that's why she's so supportive of Obito in the first place, which is why Obito loves her, which is the advice she passes on to Anko, which is why another reason Anko becomes less shy in the future. It all works in tandem. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So, with that all being said, there's one more factor of this rewrite that I do want to say that I don't necessarily like. So, in particular, mm. oh, no. I, again, don't really like connecting Naruto to Obito and then Hinata to, to Anko, because I feel like it just doesn't oh. work in a way, especially considering, especially, mm. especially for the Narusaku shipping fans out there. Everyone under the sun wants Naruto and Sakura to end up together. So if we're having a tragic end to Obito and Anko as well, that shows in both the good timeline and the bad timeline. And every timeline, it just doesn't work out. And that's just devastating in a way. So I kind of don't like it for that reason. Hmm. I timed it out. Yeah. Look at what a fan said. <laughs> because in this case, Obito is getting neither girl. Like Naruto ended up with the girl that he didn't even want, but at least he ended up with someone. But like, <laughs> I just feel like there's a weird connection here that just doesn't work, and it's just connecting them in the wrong ways, and it's just like crossing. Crossing the wires that don't need to be crossed in the wrong ways. Maybe that's just me. I'm probably elaborating mm. poorly, oh. but move. What do you think? Do you oh, do you think is... this ruins any of mm. the dynamics between Naruto and Hinata or Naruto and Sakura in any kind of way to connect it to Obito and Rin and Anko to see how that played out in this hypothetical 
evil, wrong version of Naruto that went down the wrong path? I mean, at least I'll let Move go first, actually. Yeah, I would say those connections are, like, fine for parallels. And, like, yeah, like, also, like I said before, like, Abito could, like, survive and, like, you know, and then uh, would it be, like, Inko and Abito instead, like, um, Abito, like, move on and stop, like, I'm not sure, like, um, I would say that it would make his character less static. He knows, he was, like, a, mm, and most characters, like, um, about the Rin stuff. I mean... I don't think it's a problem, this Hinata Anko connection here, because in this case, Hinata is almost like the successful Anko, or Anko is the failed Hinata, because Hinata is going to do what Anko never did. Hinata does say something, and she is there for Naruto when he needed her most, both times, the Bain arc and the war arc. She was always yeah. there, and she did vocalize things. So I'm fine for the parallel, because just as Obido's the failed Naruto, Anko is essentially was the failed Hinata. Of course, Anko corrects her wrongs. You know, she changes for the better. But Hinata is going to do it earlier in this case. And that's going to help lead to Naruto succeeding. So I don't really have a problem with that. I think that's fine. Okay. There I'm... are two scenes I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. The first scene is when Obito made, made Wayne in the Aho life. And it, you just say, like, in this. In this way, right, Obito decided to wait until Anto died, so they didn't all be to that old. No, no, I definitely love it to where Obito's yeah. with Rin, and so throwing this in yeah. with Anko is also weird, because regardless of, like, life or death, it feels like, first of all, Anko's not gonna have a happy ending, but then also, Rin and Obito, especially Obito, is in a weird position in that regard, to where, like, Obito being with Rin in the afterlife feels less pure, in a way. Feels more wrong, in a sense. Because, yeah. like, Anko exists in this version. Yeah. And the other scene I'm thinking about is in the lad. You don't have a scene of Anto died on Hana in the lad. You want to. Yeah. I thought something goofy. I don't think we need to go that far. But. <laughs> you could have Anko and Kakashi end up together. Like, this is an actual ship some people have. Mm. I've seen it before. You could have, uh, like, almost like the flip flop to where Anko and Kakashi end up together and then Rin and Obito in the afterlife together. That, that would be <laughs> weird. Really that would be weird, too weird. weird. This can work if this is the reason they both overcome their trauma. They find healing within each other. And that's how they're both able to move on from Ob yeah. Obito moving forward. Especially with Kakashi retiring. In this case, I would have more Kakashi Anko scenes to help build towards it a little bit. So, like, Anko's mind's on Obito, but, like, mm -hmm. she's with... It's kind of like Naruto and Hinata to where his mind's on Sakura, but Hinata's there and they have their moments that matter. You can do sort of something similar with Kakashi and Anko here, but now we're going all over the place. So. If we're doing that, then but this yeah, can be the... So, fun. if we're doing this, this can be the successful version of the failure that was Jiraiya and Tsunade's story ending up together. In this case, Anko and Kakashi yeah. ending up together, it's like the same parallel to that, but whereas they failed, Anko and Kakashi are succeeding. In a weird way. Yeah. Uh, I have like, then they're not gonna stuff. make the Tsunade mistake of letting Jiraiya go off in his own to do the thing. Like, they're gonna, like, vow to stay together or something. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a lot. There's a lot there that I absolutely love. But there are those two things I mentioned, oh, one at the beginning, one at the end, that I don't really like. And so if I were to, like, rate this on, like, a scale, I would say 90%. I'm there for it. I think it's, like, 90% good, maybe even 95 if we want to go that far. But I'm not fully there. But I'm curious if you guys are fully there. If you're like 90%, maybe 50%, maybe freaking 10% if you hate the idea. I don't know, 0% even. How much I'm do you want it to be there? 90. How much? I think around, around 90 or, or 80. 90 or 80? Okay, okay. What about you, Move? How much, like, percent do you like this? <laughs> you said 100? Ew. Okay. Okay. Oh wow. And finally, coming back to He's all for it. Yeah, all for it. 
Um, so I, I, I definitely wouldn't say 100% because I, I just personally, if I was going to do this, I would just want more time to think out all the nuances yeah. and kinks, you know? It, it's probably part of the reason why you're only 90 instead of 100. Is there's some small things, but I think right. if you just gave it time to, instead of coming off the cuff for an hour, you know, you had, <laughs> you know, three years to really plan it yeah. out, you could probably figure out how to solve all the issues yeah. you might have with it. So it's kind of like the Kimi Morrow thing that we were doing to where yeah. we had a, a ton of really good ideas, but there was some small stuff that we were unsure of. Whereas the Choji one, it was just like, nah, bro, we, we had zero <laughs> contentions the whole way. So that's something I'm like 100% for. For this, I, I'd probably say like, I like the idea. I don't think not having it is a problem by any means, obviously. Zero problems with not having it. But having it does feel like it this could be a good elevation at the very least it's interesting so you know maybe 80 yeah. percent. you know it's like i like it a lot and just mm -hmm. i would want to work out all kinks so that there's no corniness no yeah. good but also goofiness i just would want it to be just genuinely pure good yeah. um so yeah mm, okay. that would be really hard especially with Naruto, but then, you know how not it would will but it will match <laughs> yeah I, I think the honestly the weirdest thing about the whole rewrite is just knowing Anko's personality as it was and just putting in the Hinata ness into it. But it gives like, a reason like, for Anko to have her personality rather than she just I does. agree. I agree. But I know I'm presenting it to crazy. anyone who doesn't like rewrites. Mm. I feel like that's a hard barrier to get over for a lot. Like. No offense to Camp Cam, I feel like that would be a hard <laughs> barrier for her to get over. Because sure. that just it's so not Anko mm. that it, it almost feels like a shock. Yeah. Um I, I mean, think that'd be the hardest hurdle for people. Is just for introducing a past Anko that's so different. Like I said, there's a reason for her to be the way she is. It's just mm. that's probably the hardest hurdle for presenting it to other people. I mean, it won't be a shadow like Yan. It won't be a shadow like Hana. It might it why right how Yon Obito and Naruto are different, despite them being so very similar, Yon Anto and Hana will be very different too. Yeah, yeah. I think in this case, uh, Anko could still be like her quirkiness that she is. Like, they almost like Naruto to some extent. She just will lack confidence like Hinata did. So she'll be shy, yet goofy and outgoing at the same time, which is a genuine thing people can be. So it's not like weird. So the point is, she'll be shy when it comes to Obito, but otherwise she's yeah. still gonna be Alko the way we know her. And if you present it that way, mm -hmm. then I feel like this comes across much easier for people. We were just mostly focusing on the Hinata shyness aspect, but I wouldn't completely turn it on Hinata. Exactly. She just clams up again once she realizes Obito is Obito freaking 20 years later, and just for like a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Adina may wondered how well will we had all the flat bad? Like when will we when will we see the flat bad? Well when we already Most got Most of this is just subtle additions to the flashbacks we already have. Yeah. So like Ob uh, Obito and uh uh I'll go. The flashback with that one, it's just gonna go where the flower Kakashi Obito flashback is, which is the second Obito village invasion flashback. The Scenes of Anko just there and all the other, like, for the most part, Anko's just going to have a small addition to every flashback that's already yeah. there. They're not going to be new flashbacks. They're just small exactly. additions to the flashbacks we already have. Yeah. You know, we're talking but, about, but, like, 10 pages total extra in this mm. whole manga, probably. Like, it's not, well, like, about, anything crazy. What about the Anko and Win one? What about that one? That so that one, I mean, you, you get, you're just adding that in. Party. To that scene that already existed. Yeah. Yeah, but that can be Obito flat but that that Obito will know that. Okay, we Well, first of all, Obito was there. Uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah, but ha... You could just That's... show the flashback anyways. It doesn't have to be Obito thinking about it the whole way. Yeah. I mean it... I mean, you want to, you to all oh, that have Anto remember her past. You want to, I mean, Anto remember part of her past. 
You could also have um, Anko yeah. thinking about that. So that chocolate flashback scene we're talking about, that could also be from Anko's perspective mm -hmm. as her remembering when she didn't have the courage to say anything. Yeah. And then that's right before she decides to say something to Obito in the war here, or whatever she says. Even if it's just saying Obito, you know, the point is she could be thinking about that, thinking about her current self and like, it's almost like her internal battle where she freezes up then she thinks about when she was frozen up in the past and realizes how that was a problem and is like all right i gotta say something now she could do something there i will say real quick in light of the kabuto obito onko scene i definitely would have kabuto capture onko for this rewrite because i love that idea of kabuto like being like mm. i know who you are yeah um it, I didn't realize that. Naruto also has a precedent for this already. Like, they show scenes of, like, from Hinata's perspective of a flashback to when Hinata's, like, looking at Naruto when he's training or whatever as a kid. But then you hear Naruto's internal monologue of which Hinata could have no way of, Like, they already do this. And they do the same yeah. thing with, like, Naruto to where Hinata's watching it. But Naruto didn't know. But, like, naruto's the one thinking back to this flashback the point is they're showing the scene as it was so they're showing both internal monologues from both characters even if it's from one person's perspective i didn't realize something that might make a little powerful in the rewrite remember, remember that died that led into tishami uh mind and memory why do why didn't that die time to end with anto at any point in that 20 years we well, he just that? doesn't. He just doesn't know. In the same way, why didn't he do something to Kakashi? <laughs> it's like they just didn't realize that they were under the Genjutsu. <laughs> it's a subtle Genjutsu. Mm. You could even have it be to where it's not Genjutsu. Like it's like a one-time thing. He just erased her memory. It just wiped her mind. And the same thing that like Sasuke yeah, did like to Jiraiya. Yeah, like Sasuke does with Jiraiya. Yeah. 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 Like I'm yeah being living my dad. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think that's probably good for the Anko thing. I feel like I had one more thing to say, but mm -hmm. probably. I, I, okay, I will say, yeah, I will just get in the elephant out of the room. It's blasphemous to change anything in Naruto. Again, no offense to the freaking Cam Cam, but I'm sure she would be like, oh, well, why are you even changing this? This is fine as it is. Why, why are you rewriting this? Like, oh, Anko's fine. Hey, you, don't need to, you don't need to it's rewrite not. Anko. You don't need to change her. She's fine. I feel like you would say that. It's fun. We why it's fun. Exactly. We well, yeah, I mean, in, in this case, I think it, you know, it. it's not like it's hurting this year. The, the Choji one, I, I come back to that one. It's just, it's just straight <laughs> gold. It's just straight up better. <laughs> Nobody likes the Choji Asuma yeah. fight. They don't do anything with Choji anyway. Choji's death scene was beautiful if he actually died. It's just like, mm -hmm. this just, that one I just feel like it just is better. Like, it, it yeah. should be there. This Alka one, it's one of those just like, it definitely could be cool. I think it could be a good elevation, but it's definitely not necessary. It's not the same yeah. as the Toji one. I will say, changing Anko, she's yeah. such a nothing character in the series as it is right now, to where pretty much who's going to care? Pretty much no one in the fandom is that hardcore of a fan that they're really going to care about changing Anko of all characters. That, that said, Obito's a sensitive character and a central figure in the story. So doing anything with Obito has huge ramifications for the Naruto series as a whole. So that's where I can see people yeah. really being sensitive about the rewrite and being really iffy about I it. Like, I feel like this rewrite will make will may Anto have more fans if it's done right. Yeah, yeah. It's more it's more to say well, that sure. Obito's like, if this the was big thing. in the series, more people would care about Anko. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it it, it they were done right. I'm not mm. I don't wanna know what how how Kimoto would do that. How how he 